Today on Timescast, the Taliban shows openness to talks with the United States just as an inflammatory video surfaces. In Cairo, former President Jimmy Carter expresses doubt that Egypt's military will relinquish control as promised. Full civilian control is, is a little bit excessive, I think. And Porgy and Bess opens on Broadway Thursday night. A video that was posted on video sharing websites uh, on Wednesday night purporting to show um, U.S. Marines urinating on dead Afghan soldiers has drawn widespread condemnation from the Afghan government, uh, the United States government and the U.S. military today. This is a despicable uh, picture. The United States has started an investigation. ISAF, of course, uh, will do anything to support this. The videos are circulating at a really sensitive time when the US is trying to start negotiations for the first time with the Taliban. It's important to bear in mind um, that there are huge questions about the authenticity and the provenance of this video. We don't know if it's real and the US military today has promised a swift investigation to try and work out where it came from and who are the men on this video. Regardless of that, it has the potential to have a huge effect on these budding negotiations. An emissary for the Obama administration is heading to the region next week to try to start these negotiations. And this is just one more thing for him to contend with. Success in these negotiations in this political year would be a huge advantage for the Obama administration. Former U.S. President Jimmy Carter is in Cairo this week to help monitor the final round of parliamentary elections. We have been very pleased at this point at the conduct of elections. Some problems, but in general, the will of the people have been expressed accurately. He sat down for an interview with The Times' David Kirkpatrick. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. President. On Wednesday, we met with former President Jimmy Carter. An enormously important person in Egyptian history because he was the person who inaugurated the U.S. and Egyptian alliance uh, more than 30 years ago. He's regarded with extraordinary respect and has really unrivaled access to almost everyone in the Egyptian government. President Carter's assessment was that the Egyptian military is unlikely to give up all of their powers. How confident are you that we could see a system here, you know, a year out with full <coughs> civilian control of the government? Full civilian control is, is a little bit excessive, I think. Uh, I don't think the SCOP is going to turn over full re responsibility to the civilian government. There are questions about, about uh, immunity. Yeah. Uh, there are questions about who's going to control the budget for the military. Those kind of things are very sensitive for the military. But I think that both sides want to see conciliatory attitude to resolve them harmoniously. And I'm just wondering, you know, on the, on the Egyptian street, there is a lot of bad feeling about U.S. military aid uh, to the Egyptian military. People feel like the U.S. was backing the Egyptian dictatorship. Yes, I think it was. But I don't think, I don't think the United States uh, anticipated the revolution. Nobody did. Uh, nobody anticipated it being as successful as it was so quickly. What I'm trying to ask you about uh, is the yeah. perception on the Egyptian street that the U.S. was supporting a dictatorship yeah. at odds with its values in order to preserve peace with Israel. I think that's true. Okay. We were. And, and, and I can't say that, that, uh, that I wasn't doing that as well. There were two elements in the Camp David Accords. One was peace between Israel and Egypt. The other one was Palestinian rights. Palestinian rights have not been honored by the Mubarak government. And my expectation is that the new uh, government of Egypt will be much more attuned toward Palestinian rights than has been the case uh, for the last 20 years or 30 years. Usually January and February are the slowest months on Broadway for selling tickets and opening shows, but as it happens, the most talked about and controversial musical of this Broadway season is opening tonight. It's the Gershwin's Porgy and Bess. It's a love story between a disabled beggar named Porgy and a woman named Bess set in the early 20th century in a black neighborhood in Charleston, South Carolina. 
Porgy and Bess is considered by many to be the greatest American opera, but it's about four hours long as an opera and has never really worked on commercial Broadway before, even though the songs are so famous by George Gershwin and Ira Gershwin. The controversy surrounding this Broadway musical of Porgy and Bess is twofold. The first is that the artistic team went back into the opera and in order to shape it from a four-hour show into a two-hour musical, they made a number of changes to modernize dialogue, uh, to update the story, which raised the hackles of the composer Stephen Sondheim and several other artists who basically said this was not the intent of the Gershwins. The view of the stars of this poor game best, Audra McDonald and Norm Lewis, is that this production will reach a much wider audience. The other part of the controversy is that the Gershwin estates had authorized and even encouraged all of these changes. And other composers have raised concerns about how heirs who may not even have known or have met the original composers and lyricists might make changes that violate the spirit or the legacy of those works. These composers have said, in effect, that the Porgy and Bess experience makes it all that much more necessary for composers to leave in their wills and with their executors clear instructions about how their work is to be staged after their deaths.